we're on the second part of chapter one and two, uh, first lecture. Um, Do you have anything yet? Not yet? I'll go back to you later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, who's Alex, Sarah, G Gabriel, and Willem? So it's this table? Okay. Um, did you find something? Okay, um, which company are you looking at? Oh, I just wait for the documentation. The oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, so can you think of any um, example, like in a specific company website perhaps, like if an example of how uh, the information architecture could, um, could relate to the cost one of these costs. So maybe they do it correctly or they don't do it correctly. And then if they don't do it correctly, it could have implications for for one of these costs. So if you like do you know an example of a of a bad website in your recollection? Can you think of something that you've been to this website before and you can't find what you're looking for? Mm. Like uh, an example for a good website, like Google, for example. Mm -hmm. Google is uh, one of the most powerful companies around the world, mm -hmm. and it's about um, you know it's about web, it's about internet. Mm -hmm. And if you go inside Google, I think that uh, it's the most simple website uh, that you can find in, in the internet. So maybe it is it is related. Okay. <coughs> so that's. Um Related to, um, I mean, it's it is relating mm. about uh, the cost of finding information because uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know what people need. Mm. Uh, you 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 know that people uh, uh, doesn't doesn't need uh, such a um, uh, complex website. Mm -hmm. They need something simple just to find information, mm -hmm. find it uh, uh, quickly, and find it what they. they need. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> so people, I think people don't need uh, a website full of uh, things that they maybe need. Maybe so it doesn't it depend on the website because it's like Google's. Uh, well, it depends what you're talking about. You're talking about the search engine, or are you talking about yeah, Google depends. company? But I think that it's always the same. If you want to buy something in the internet, I think it's better just to find uh, to um, mm. to buy it in a website that mm. is uh, simple. Okay, I should pop out of this in a minute. Mm. <coughs> so this is the search engine. So this is the one in Norwegian. And I can search for something <laughs> like um, like uh, SAS. Mm, I just didn't get this far. OK, this one. So um, when I think about it, it's also like a design for a specific company. And Google is kind of a service company, they uh, helping you find other people. But like within this organization, um, uh, we 
need to be able to know that uh, Norsk is the language here. So it's not really obvious to guess. And then you can pick another language. So I can pick English. And then how does this uh, how is this website organized in terms of um, <coughs> helping people find what they need to find? And you can uh, think <coughs> about what are these uh, <coughs> what is the cost of finding information here and what is the cost of not finding information? If I can't find this flight I'm looking for right away, then I go to somebody else's search engine. Maybe I go to a meta search engine like or like another company like Momondo or something like a that combines uh, travel agencies or um, kayak. So if I think I can't find it here, maybe I say, okay, they don't really have what I'm looking for, and I go to kayak. This is also a Norwegian thing. And so this is like a, like a travel site. Or I don't know if you know of any English travel sites. Sky Scanner. Hmm? Sky Scanner. Okay, comes up. <coughs> I get the Norwegian one, but um, so the the point is that um, it has to do with uh, retaining customers, and it has to do with um, <coughs> like uh, if you do it wrong the first time, then you have to redesign it again. There's another site. Um, hmm. another airline and um, a couple of years ago I was so slow yeah a couple of years ago I used this as an example and uh, since then I've actually improved a bit this isn't even their website this is a different one uh, they've improved a bit on their on their website But it's still fairly simple. Um, but it was there was like parts of it that didn't have uh, English, and then there were like it was there was a number of problems with it. So you can um, imagine that they would they probably had to pay for some redesign of this as well. Okay. Does anyone have any other examples besides travel industry that might point to something? Did you want? Did you have any examples? Did you come? No. <laughs> I'm not helping. <laughs> okay. Um. Some of the factors that go into this in more detail are that uh, the cost of finding something, uh, how much time does it take, what is the frustration if you don't find it, uh, cost of not finding uh, bad decisions, alternate channels, uh, maybe people go off and try somebody else, try your competitor. Uh, cost of construction, staff, technology, planning, and bugs. Uh, you have to be able to <coughs> account for how much it costs to involve the resources to, to build the site and maintain it and the need to do redesigns. Uh, if employees leave, is it, is it intuitive how to use it? Um, education, related products, um, projects, and people. Uh, if you inform your customers about your products, are they more likely to stay as your customers? And then identity, reputation, and trust are related to brand. 
to improving your brand uh, identity. So um, why does information architecture matter? And these are some examples that were given in the book. Um, so basically, the employees um, w can, if it's poorly designed, can waste more time in searching. And if it's um, uh, the problem of um, uh, there can be a waste in the ability, inability to locate and retrieve information, but which is cost uh, companies a lot. Uh, poorly architected retail sites uh, may undersell, so that means you're losing out on sales. 50% uh, of the web sales are lost because customers can't find them it fast enough. And then the content on the typical public uh, corporate website grows at 80% rate annually, meaning that if you don't have a good design, you're losing out on the potential growth rate. And then also some um, additional findings by another research company. They said that the most common usability problems are these two, the poorly organized search results and poor information architecture. And that these are also problems, but these are the most common ones. Uh, this was a something that wasn't in the book, but it's much more recent. Um, it's been used, uh, it's by the Jesse James Garrett uh, group, and they talk about elements of user experience. And many of the elements here have to do with information architecture. So even though they identify information architecture here, which is a structural design of the information space to facilitate intuitive access to content, uh, it actually has elements at all of these stages. So there's from concept to completion. Um, first, you need to identify the user needs and the site objective. The user needs depend on the group that you've identified. And then the site objective, is this a business? Is it a creative site? Is it for personal use? Uh, the content requirements are the definition of the content elements within the site in order to meet the user needs, the functional specifications. And then the architecture is uh, the structural design of the information spaces to facilitate access. And then navigation, information design, and visual design are also elements of information architecture. Uh, designing the presentation of information so it can be understood. And navigation, how do users move about through the information architecture. And then the visual design is, is it appealing? Uh, does it uh, relate well to the navigational elements of the site. So uh, these are just to give you an idea of what the role of the information architect is and some of the things that we've talked about in terms of the types of people that do information architecture are like interface designers and graphic designers and they might have roles in different uh, parts of the design but they're all uh, related to information architecture. This is the same picture, just a bit dark, like. Okay. Um, getting back to the book, uh, this is on page 13. I chose the main uh, concepts in information, information architecture is that uh, this is the simple model. This is, uh, it's a complex system, but it's a simple model, and that it involves content, context, and users which we'll expand on in the next few slides. And that uh, the way people see systems is that they, they experience the interface, but they don't necessarily see the architecture that's underneath. If the architecture works well, then uh, it should be invisible to the user. 
and that knowledge networks are made up of people across organizations and that so the users are not just individual users but they can also be networks and that information seeking behaviors differ among different types of users so uh, how you search for information and how you get the answers is, is different and so one of the chapters will go through this information seeking behavior Uh, the AI uh, systems, um, <coughs> they usually are made up of uh, different types of interfaces and search engines and they can also, they will also involve uh, information about the information. So metadata is information about the content of what you're searching for, characteristics of the content. And uh, depending on the, the algorithm, uh, you get um, different types of ranking and clustering or grouping of that of the search results. Um, so it involves concepts of semantic networks, how words relate to each other, and also the concept of being able to find information. So uh, how you search for something, you can just use a search um, a search uh, box search for something and you have a search engine behind it. You could also have things displayed on your web page uh, so that you have global navigation indicators at the top, local navigation indicators on the side, and some contextual navigation aids in the middle. And these are different ways of organizing uh, the navigation system. Other ways to find information is if you're like doing a keyword search, you might do it on words and then have something that matches those words to similar words. So you might have a tool that broadens the category of the search or narrows the category of the search, uh, finds related terms, finds synonyms or acronyms, and this is called the semantic search. But um, <coughs> what you will be doing eventually in the deliverable for this course is you'll be working on things like wireframes and these are uh, the schematic la layout of the web page and what each of the different areas of the web page are supposed to do so you kind of are structuring how it's supposed to look and you may make use of it uh, this is a like a visual tool and also a different type of organizational tool is the blueprint and um, we will discuss the concept of controlled vocabularies. So being by structuring how the information is stored, it has certain meaning. So if I have, um, if I have my name here in this field that belongs to email, it has a different meaning than if I have it in a, na in a field that has names. If I have it here, it means it's part of my email address. So so it has a different meaning depending on how it's the information is stored. And then, um, yeah, so it's like fax and photocopier and different uh, domains. And then a metadata schema, how do you uh, are able to, uh, will assist, metadata also helps you to identify information. If I'm storing, uh, if I'm a company that's making uh, videos available, like Netflix or something, and I want people to be able to find the movie that they want to watch, then there's usually some description that goes along with the movie. And there's a title, and there's maybe how long it is, and so forth. So this information about the movie is the metadata about the movie. And depending on how that scheme works, it affects how people find stuff. If you have a category that is <coughs> uh, gruesome films, then you will have some, be there will be different groupings of films underneath that category than if you had just comedy and drama, for example. So it depends on your metadata scheme as to how you can find that underlying information, how effectively and how it serves the audience. Okay, um, so chapter two is about uh, different kinds of uh, 
uh, educational programs and different kinds of jobs that are available for information architects. And we don't spend, we don't, uh, there's not a lot in this chapter that we look at. But one of the points are that um, you can combine experiences or titles from other job, job descriptions. And that uh, you know, there can be part of the information architecture's uh, architect's job. So um, there's also a picture on page, or a figure on page 21 that has uh, INEAs and AUDIs. So the inside fields are the information architect's core responsibilities. And then the outside fields are kind of people that might be hired in as consultants and look at it from an external point of view. Uh, this is the simple model that uh, we talk, they talk about in chapter two. And these are the elements of the information architecture system that are important. So you have the content and the context and the users. Uh, from the context point of view, you need to be able to frame the user's needs based on the business goals, the culture, the technology, the resources, and the constraints. From the content point of view, there's a lot here that you might include. And uh, one thing can be ownership. So uh, issues that are related to, this is like uh, related to what's inside in the content, the user or the information content. And it could have issues like licensing and control, who controls the, the content or the information, who owns it, <coughs> ownership control, and then the format, if it's uh, text, uh, could lots of different types of formats, Word, PDF, videos, again lots of formats, uh, and then it could be other things like database documents or and then there's structure so this is the granularity words maybe a thousand pages and metadata and issues of tagging is this manual or automatic How good is the metadata that enables you to find something? Consistency. Is it the same throughout? Some ways of tagging automatically is making use of folksonomies. Uh, this is like uh, crowd tagging or um, just individual tagging, but being done by the user themselves. So they create uh, different types of connections like when you tag someone on your Facebook on a picture there, it creates kind of a network of people that can see that picture. And uh, there's uh, different ways to, 
to do this also. Other things like, um, for example, um, Pinterest. It's like uh, creating uh, groups of people that follow uh, pictures and uh, and then there's other kinds of aids to be able to follow the to find pictures like searching in categories but um, but you may just follow a certain group or uh, also um, Spotify being able to follow uh, different types of and <coughs> clusters of uh, songs and groupings of songs and so you can follow people you can follow categories yeah and um, Let's see, also other types of uh, what is the impact on information retrieval. what we talk about here has to do with um, how, well, how you interact with the audiences to get the information and find out about their needs and behaviors and being able to understand the goals kind of will assume certain goals of your business. So we spend a lot of time talking about the document types and, the, and how these things are, how the web pages are constructed based on um, these types of factors. So, um, yeah, so these are um, content, this is stuff that makes up the site. We just kind of talked about some of this uh, metadata. Then there's the volume of data, how much do you have, and the dynamicism, so like, does it, is it very static or is it changing? And then um, it has to, the third part is, so it has to match their context, it has to match their user needs and behaviors as well. Okay, so um, the two simple model is this uh, intersecting three circles of um, the context and the content and the user needs. Yeah, the user needs and the context and the content. And so it's it's good that it's simple because then it can apply to many general situations. But you also need to um, um, realize that uh, there's not one answer for finding information. So if you are searching for something, it may not have one simple answer. It may have many different types of answers, and this has to match the, the user's needs. So there's different ways of seeking uh, or uh, satisfying these needs. Like uh, somebody may want to <coughs> find everything that's on a particular subject, and in that case, they do an exhaustive search. They want to uh, keep searching until they get every possible uh, hit back. And then <coughs> another way is all good things, and that's an exploratory search. So um, <coughs> you don't know what you need to know, but you're, you're kind of looking for something that will meet certain criteria. And then the right thing is uh, known item seeking, when you know exactly what you're looking for, so you have a very narrow search. And then refinding is the concept of being able to find again something you found before that might that was relatively good. So these types of information seeking behaviors, they're talked more about in chapter three, and that's a separate set of notes from this set of notes. So uh, even though this was in the <coughs> the part one notes uh, from um, Hans Fredrik's uh, older slides. I didn't talk about chapter three much here, and that's in uh, the next set of notes. 
So in summary, the first part of the book, which is on uh, um, introducing information architecture, is consisting of chapters one, two, and three, and that's defining information architecture, uh, practicing information architecture, and then user needs and behavior. What we talked about today were basically chapters one and two, and chapters three is in the next uh, slide set. Uh, the second part of the book will talk about the basic principles of information architecture, and that uh, is going to cover these systems that we talked about, uh, the organizational systems, the labeling systems, the navigation systems, and the search systems, mm -hmm. and also vab uh, vocabulary control, like with metadata. So there's a chapter on metadata. And then in the third part of the book, we talk about uh, process and methodology. So how do you actually design a site? And you need to do research. You need to have a strategy for how you're going to design your site. And then you need to think about design and documentation. Um, the fourth part is something about um, the ethics and tools and so forth and the team that's in place. And then the uh, fifth part is making the case for information architecture business strategy. We don't uh, cover so much of that except that you have an exercise at the end which will kind of pull together diff different parts. So that's how that, that section is important. But a lot of uh, the mm. concepts are discussed in the next two sections, part two and three, about the basic principles and then the process and methodology. So um, again, uh, I'll just show you the web page for a second. Close this one. So we just uh, covered this lecture uh, with chapters one and two, and then the next one, I'll just open it up if it lets me. Okay, so user needs and behaviors and the anatomy of AI. Uh, and then again, I, as I told you, I won't be here for the next four weeks into all of September. And this is discussed in the lecture notes that are on the video notes, the videos that are on from last year. Okay, so um, when you go through this, this is what's talked about in the video. And some of these you see that we talked about today. And so that's what I'm saying. When you start the video and uh, from the video 101 on the website, you can start at like 14 minutes into the video. And then you get up to here. And this is kind of where you should start for chapter three. Okay. And. Um, So then I just go back here, and again I'll show you this, the videos are here, this is, <coughs> this is the one that you can start in 14 minutes, so that has 3 and 4, and I think this has 5 and 6, but you need to be aware that there's some sound problems. But you always have the notes, and you have the book. And when we come back, we'll talk about five and six again. But then, of course, if you have any questions about these two, we can talk about these as well. Okay. So um, 
I didn't want to really get into the next chapter unless uh, <coughs> um, does anyone have any questions about the organization or like what we're going to do Okay. Um, if we go to required assignments, that's number one. And it's due on October twenty second. And you should have it. Uh, you should mail it to me. There's my email address. Mm -hmm. And you should have it by nine o'clock in the morning because we have a lecture on that day, and we will talk about this in the lecture. Okay. And then number two is um, not until November 5th. So the first one is not due until, well, I'm already back in October. So there'll be enough time to talk about things before you get to the first assignment. And if you want to, you can of course <coughs> do the uh, weekly exercises, but th this is not required. There's no grade. And if you do this, it's just because you want to discuss the topic and you want some feedback from me. So if you send me something, I can give you some comments about what you wrote and see that you understand the concept correctly. But uh, it's not required. So it's kind of, I know this is, this is a bit of independent uh, learning here, but I think it's not so difficult and we'll have time to catch up. And the quest like this, you don't need so many lecture hours, I think. Okay, so if there's no further questions, I think I'll just end it here. I know there's some people that didn't come. And I'll, put it, I'll probably put up this uh, list of names and by approved exercises. So you'll see that at least your name will come up here. And we'll probably get more in, in October. And then we'll start to put up the um, the grades for like two-thirds exercises. Okay. So welcome everybody.